Hello everyone, this is the uh, first video, the first video of 2.2, Bonding Between Atoms. Um, in this video, we'll be covering background uh, knowledge in bonding. Things that will be covered is the formation of bonds between um, atoms result in stable valence shell configurations. Energy is released when bonds are formed, and also energy is required to break bonds. Finally, metallic, ionic, and covalent bonds are the strong forces of attraction, which is also known as primary bonds already. Uh, that happens between particles. That would be a, a recap of 2.1 anyway. So um, yeah, uh, when you take notes uh, from this slide, uh, this subsection of 2.2, uh, um, yeah, you only, I guess, need to take notes and add notes into um, each different types of primary bonds section. But yeah, anyway, this video is on uh, more generic knowledge about uh, primary chemical bonds. All right, so let's in look into that. So atoms, uh, they form chemical bonds with other atoms. And uh, why do they do that? So that the, all the atoms to have full valence shell. Now, if all the atoms have got the valence shell, their valence shell become becoming full, then the overall group of the molecule or um, yeah, the smallest component of ionic compound uh, becomes stable as well. Now, atoms can form chemical bonds with other atoms or same element, of the same element, or atoms of different element. Um, chemical bonds from uh, uh, that form between atoms are called primary chemical bonds, which requires electrons, and we'll look at uh, that video um, in the hyperlink there. Metallic is the first one that we will cover. Uh, in the second video. And third video, we'll look at ionic and a bit more into ionic on the fourth one and probably have fifth one for the covalent um, bonds. Um, you can see the type of atoms that um, would be involved in metallic, ionic, and covalent bond in the screen. Um, that should be just a recap of what we looked at in previous videos from 2.1. Anyway. Bonds and valence shell configuration. Um, the formation of bonds between atoms result in a stable valence shell configuration called the octet configuration. The oct means eight. Octet configuration means, uh, well, the atoms having eight electrons in outermost shell, in a Bohr's model, of course, not the subject notation. For example, in this diagram you are seeing, um, sorry, two oxygen molecule uh, atoms there, two oxygen atoms. And how many electrons are there in the outermost shell of oxygen? Six. Now, six is not eight. It wants to gain two. So what oxygen does is that the by sharing two electrons, I'll zoom that in there, by sharing two electrons each, the electron configuration of 2, 6 and 2, 6 becomes 2, 8 and 2, 8. Two electrons are shared from each side of atoms. So that's what would occur in the covalent molecule. Whereas when it comes to ionic, um, ionic compound, they form ions first. So Na and Cl, 281 and 287, they want to transfer that electron so both of them have got the octet configuration first um, and by transferring electron they would get charged uh, positive and negative so they'll attra attract each other to form Na plus and Cl minus together and becomes NaCl. So either case what I want you to be able to see is that the um, um, outermost shell will gain eight electron or consider to be eight. So that's the octet configuration. All right, let's talk about bonds and energy. Now, energy is released when bonds are formed, okay? And then energy is required when you're trying to break the bond. Consider the formation of water or electricity of water. Now you can write equations for this one. 
Um, so if you start with hydrogen gas, H2, and O2, they would have got quite a lot of energy stored chemically. So that would um, be shown as green part of this bar here, a lot of energy stored. And once you strike a match and burn it, it will go <laughs> popping. Test can be done. Potential energy would go up when all the um, atoms have been heated up by the energy that they create itself or um, from the match. But by forming a bond, it will become, become stable and water will be formed. So potential energy stored in chemical is much less compared to before. Hopefully you can see that. So energy, that much energy that decreased were um, released from this, exper uh, from this equation, H2 plus, sorry, 2H2 plus O2, that forms two molecules of water. And if you want to go back, you would need to add electros electricity, Elect um, so that's electrolysis. You add electricity to break the bonds here to produce oxygen and hydrogen. Now later in here, we'll be looking at what's called hydrogen fuel cell. Um, and in there, you'll be looking at breaking water down into uh, hydrogen and oxygen pure gases. And that's how you can get that fuel for running a car, for example. Um, so yeah, so consider that um, the energy, sorry, make note of the flow and the direction of energy when you're making and breaking the bond. All right, so that's, uh, that's it for this section. Uh, we'll look at the metallic bonds in the next video. All right, see you later.